Hello, welcome to my improvised summer survival guide as an alternative to the um, foretold live OT stream, which did not happen due to technical difficulties. So today I'm just going to cover um, a few summer survival tips to hopefully get you through all of the forecast hot weather without too much of a flop, shall we say? Um, so heat intolerance is actually a really, really common side effect for people with hypermobility disorders, particularly those of us who have somewhat wonky autonomic systems. So your autonomic system is responsible for things like your heart rate, your blood pressure, your digestion, some of your hormone functions when you sweat, when you pee, and you know, hot weather can really, really interfere with that because a lot of people have difficulty regulating their body temperature appropriately. A lot of people in this category will fall into the I'm way too cold when I shouldn't be category or the I'm way too hot and it is only room temperature category. I quite often spend all of my days sitting next to the fridge wistfully um, and all of my evenings, you know, freezing cold or vice versa. Um, that's a pretty common thing for people with hypermobility disorders. So I thought I would just cover some of that and then hopefully it will be useful to a lot of you. So I'm just going to go over some of my personal survival tips, which are a mix of things that I've learned the hard way, picked up from others, or read about online, or done my research on. So hopefully these are useful for a few more people. Um, I'm going to start off with the absolute basics of hydration. Staying hydrated is totally essential for hot weather. So what you will find when you are you know, dehydrated is that things that are normally manageable, like a little bit of low blood pressure or a little bit of tachycardia, become a thousand times worse. Staying hydrated in regular, everyday British weather is difficult enough. In super hot weather, when you're sweating out your fluids and salts as quick as you can put them back in, um, it's much more difficult. So I would genuinely recommend that absolutely everyone carries a drink with them pretty much all of the time. If you're going somewhere where you know you can buy drinks, fine, but if not, carry one of your own. Um, particularly refillable water bottles, simply because a lot of them now are much better at keeping drinks cool, so it becomes much more refreshing. Um, I know probably quite a lot of you have, out of desperation, had a sip out of a drink that's been in the car for a bit too long and instantly regretted it because there's nothing worse than drinking warm blackcurrant squash. Um, so, yeah, drinks bottles are an essential. Remember that with hydration, you're not just looking at fluids, you are looking at salts as well. If you are having loads and loads of this and none of this, you're just going to pee the fluids straight back out again. So you may find that you actually have to up your salt intake in order to be as well hydrated as you could be. Sounds a little bit kind of backwards, having something salty in order to make you better hydrated, but as long as you're getting the fluids in to balance that out, it's probably the best way to go. For a lot of people with conditions like postural tachycardia, you may find you need salt more anyway, just to kind of keep you functional. So water isn't just for drinking. It can be used for something called evaporation cooling. When you sweat, generally your body releases moisture. As that moisture evaporates from your skin, the energy needed to turn the sweat on your body into floating in the air stuff um, comes from heat. So it takes body heat away from you and cools you down. You can kind of fake that by spraying water onto your skin or your clothing. As that evaporates, it will then cool you down. Um, so carrying a spray bottle can be quite handy, particularly if you know you're going to be somewhere where you've got access to refillable water. You can get nice chilled spray bottles um, that are made of the same stuff as like thermos flasks that will keep water cooler for longer. Um, but generally anything does the job. I use this for misting house plants. Um, and then just for misting myself in the summer, does the same job. Um, so that is one of my kind of essentials for really, really hot days. If you are using evaporation cooling, obviously it works a lot better if you've got a bit of a breeze, um, which is why often if you head to the beach or head to the coast, the temperature might be exactly the same, but it feels like you can breathe better and you feel cooler. And that's simply because there's better airflow. You can simulate better airflow with a fan. So. Um, you know, channel your inner kind of Victorian lady and carry a folding fan with you, or one of the little battery operated or USB chargeable ones that you can just plug in. Um, I have even seen them plug into the bottom of your phone, um, so you can literally just plug it into the base of your phone and you get a little fan pointing at you while you browse social media. Um, so gadgets and gizmos like that are fantastic. Generally this is one of my standard holiday purchases now, so I've got quite a collection built up all from different places, um, so I picked stuff on holiday years ago and, you know, comes in handy every year. So there. Um, 
if you find that you are still really 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 struggling with the temperature issues and you're still getting quite hot um, you can turn to chilled solutions so these are both uh, freezable inserts for drinks bottles so you can put them in the freezer they set rock solid and you can then put them in your drinks bottle so as you refill your drink and you drink from it you've got that kind of cold in there um, that's the sort of thing that comes in handy readily available you can pick these up in supermarkets now so it's a super easy kind of way to go about it don't forget the classics so um, the very simple solutions a nice summer hat and a pair of sunglasses can make the kind of overwhelming sort of sensory glare from sunlight a bit more easy to manage um, and that kind of thing can be a lot easier if you are really struggling with that particularly if you're very kind of popsy or your autonomic system is a bit wonky at the best of times you may find that you need to adjust how you're managing your symptoms and part of that is recognizing and learning what your symptoms are so generally I don't wear a heart rate monitor but in really really hot weather I do put one back on um, particularly if we've just come out of winter or just had a bit of spring and this is the first really hot patch that we've had I find myself having to relearn what my limits are for things like pacing um, to relearn what my limits are just going upstairs how long I can stand for that kind of thing and having a watch that beeps at me when my heart rate gets too high is a really useful way to do that there are absolutely loads available on the market some are much fancier than others some store your data some don't some will last for days on one charge some won't you may find you only need them as an example when you're exercising or just for the first few days of a heat wave to just learn what your limits are so if you are feeling really really rubbish and you can't really work out why it's almost worth running through a checklist of things so is my heart rate wonky have i had enough to drink you know when was the last time i had something with salt in it is there salt in my food already um you know what's my blood pressure like and just working out what it is that your body needs is sometimes easy to do if you've got a few sort of monitoring devices laying around um, so relearning your limits that way can be quite a useful way to go if that's all still just useful but you're not quite there and you are really really struggling it is worth trying something a little bit more expensive perhaps so this is the insert from my phase change cooling vest phase change material is something that i think was originally a nasa invention maybe um, it got picked up by people who work in extreme heat environments and then um, a couple of years after that um, some guys from the MS Society I think got hold of it and went hang on this is amazing for heat intolerance. Basically phase change material um, is a solid which then turns into a liquid. Um, while it's a solid it gives off a little bit of a chill so we're not looking to freeze you completely. When it's set solid it isn't ice temperature it's about 14 to 16 degrees which is scientifically speaking the perfect temperature to cool your body down if you get your body cool enough that you're shivering that's too cold and your body will fight you and try to warm you back up so it ends up being a bit of a battle of wills between your desire to be freezing cold and your body's desire not to have hypothermia and it will try and warm you back up again um, if you can get your body down to sort of 14 16 degrees it cools you down but your body doesn't think you're at risk of being too cold so it doesn't try to warm you back up again basically these inserts fit inside a little vest and you wear them across your body till the front till the back um, depending on manufacturers or brands or whatever it looks a little bit like um like a kevlar stab vest um if you know somebody who's handy with a sewing machine you can whiz up something a lot more stylish from the colors that are currently available um, from uk suppliers but basically um, these are the sort of things that I recommend for people with really severe heat intolerance so for those of us who when they get really hot are properly at risk of either passing out or not being able to string a sentence together or just simply not having the kind of cognitive ability to go about daily life without sustaining serious injury um, so for heat intolerance sufferers like that phase change material is one of my personal favorite solutions um, I got my granny to whiz up a vest for me in nice fabric but basically it is just some lined fabric with velcro on and you just cinch it around your body and it holds the cold packs there and you are good to go from there if you don't want to spend stupid amounts of money on a face change vest bear in mind that the packs do last basically forever i've been trampolining in these and there's no signs of wear and tear whatsoever um, they really do kind of take a beating as far as products go but if you don't, you're not really committed to that much money um, there are some cooling towels cooling pillows 
um, cooling wraps available. A lot of these work by um, you put water in them once and then the water is chilled and some kind of science magic occurs and they basically stay colder for longer. Um, they aren't as effective as space change material but they are a lot more cost effective on a low budget particularly given that in the UK we don't generally have all that much hot weather so for surviving kind of the short term stuff like um, cooling pillows are a good one as well so you can get cooling pillow inserts that uh, line your pillows or you can just use them on the sofa or sit on them um, there's also a whole range of stuff available in like dog beds like pet cushions cooling ones for that which also happen to work very, very well with the average British sofa. Um, so that's worth a go. I'm trying to think what else I can talk about now. It's funny not doing these live. Normally I do live stream things, so if I say something stupid I can't take it back. But it's really tempting now when I say things to record myself again. So I'm trying not to do that and just do this in one take. Um, looking at my props arrayed around me. I think that's probably it for gadgets and gizmos. Um, what I am going to talk about a little bit though is just managing your symptoms. So generally from a pacing point of view you sort of know what your body is capable of doing from day to day based on a bit of personal experience, a bit of improvisation and a little bit of just body awareness and reading how your body is feeling. Um, you may find that in hot weather you need to drastically cut back on anything that kind of comes under the non-essential category. So it might be work, it might be um, extra social activities, it might be physical activity. Generally on days that are really, really hot, because I know my heat intolerance is a big issue and it can make me quite unwell for a number of days afterwards, I literally just shut down my entire life and head to the beach. Um, I'm very lucky that I can do that as an option, but generally speaking, the theory is sound. So have a look at your, your priorities. What have you got on that day that you actually can just push until it's cooler? You may find that it's worth just changing your sleeping patterns a little bit. So if we look at a lot of hot countries, um, if you're looking at the really hottest part of the day, you know, we were on holiday in Barcelona years and years ago, everything stops at lunchtime. Everyone just goes to the beach and eats ice cream and has a couple of drinks and relaxes. Um, and that's the sort of theory that I started to implement at home during hot weather. So if you've been emailing me for work purposes, you may have noticed a couple of midnight or 1am emails. Generally speaking, now I work a little bit in the morning, have the middle of the day off to just lay down somewhere cold and not do very much at all, and then work in the evenings. So if you can move things around, if you're doing meal prep, as an example, can you cook late at night? Can you wait till it's cooler so that you can have the door open a bit without worrying about, you know, whether or not you've got too many windows and doors open, try and get a breeze going and just move things around. So it may end up being that your, your normal daily routine isn't quite so structured, um, but hopefully that will be a good way of kind of regulating your body a bit better. If you are properly struggling with things like that, sometimes it's worth just having a really cold shower and you can do that fully clothed if you absolutely have to. There are kind of fewer rules so if you think about the things you did when you were a kid when it was too hot like setting the hose up like a sprinkler and running through it I've done that as a grown-up um, I very much enjoy going to garden centers in the summer because they quite often have sprinklers set up in the plant section and you can just kind of walk in there and shop like it's raining um, and very much enjoy the cool breeze um, so yeah my, my best advice for surviving hot weather is to listen to your body. And if your body wants you to eat ice cream for lunch, eat ice cream for lunch. If your body wants you to put the hose on and set it up in the garden and lay underneath it, then do that. It is much, much more important that you come out of this healthy than it is that you come out of this looking efficient and professional and grown up. Um, so listen to your bodies, stay cool. If you have any questions, do stick them in the comments underneath this when I share it. And I will try and just get back to a message form rather than live form. Um, I hope this has been useful and you can hear me over the chattering birds. We have quite a lot of starlings here in the evening. So in hindsight, this probably wasn't the best time to do a recording. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this has been useful. And if you do have questions, stick them in the comments and I will write back to you with a reply. Take care, guys. Good luck surviving the hot weather.